Hello everyone, this is Christopher and I'm here today with John Nelson from California. And John has been involved with Japan even longer than I have. Since 80 what? Since 75. 75? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ten years before me. Wow. Okay. So we just uh, we're we're in this interesting little um, park and we have made some coffee for ourselves Brian in an AeroPress and uh, <laughs> we just thought we might uh, since John is a very old hand in Japan I thought I might ask him for what what advice he would have for young people who are interested in studying Japan or coming to Japan. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing to really consider is whether or not you have some deep abiding interest in Japanese culture, society, history, politics, economics. Those are the major fields that people study at the advanced level. And when I say advanced, I mean upper graduate, juniors and seniors, but also master's degree and PhD. So I have a student that I worked with last year who was fluent speaker in Mandarin. He was from New York City, um, regular white guy, and worked in downtown San Francisco for the Chinese Cultural Center for the entire time he was in the program. But he came with us on a trip to Japan in, 19, in uh, 2017 and just fell in love with the country and started studying language. And he has worked so hard to get his Japanese up to a reasonable level where he can do research. And now he's going into another master's program to study Japanese religions and society without any of my influence. He just thinks it's so fascinating and he wants to do a PhD. So that's the kind of person that you need to be. You're willing to do the extra work you're willing to get the language that's, that's really essential, I think, to, to come to Japan. But this is for a person who's doing research and a person who is maybe or less committed to Japanese culture and society. If you come here just for a short time, uh, I think you still need to have an abiding interest in some aspect of Japanese society. So you're not just doing a big survey and seeing what's out there for you. You're, you're motivated, you're active, you're trying to find the answers to questions that you've been carrying around. So that's my short answer. Okay. Yeah. So what is your like most vivid first initial memory of Japan in 1975? I get asked this question, I mm. can't remember. Do you remember something crazy that you just didn't like well, seem yeah. so foreign to you? At that time, Kansas, I, right? I, I knew nothing about um, Japanese language, yeah. but I did know something about Japanese culture and society. Yeah. So I uh, remember going out after landing in Sapporo, my first morning in Sapporo, Hokkaido, and this was in March, at the end of March, and the snow was still <laughs> way above my head, but I was starving because we had had a dinner the night before and needed to find something to eat, and it was Sunday morning, and it was probably eight o'clock, and the stores with their uh, aluminum shutters were open from the bottom about this much and anybody who's lived in Japan for a week knows well the store is getting ready to open but I remember going up and knocking on the on the shutter and saying excuse me are you open yet and finally somebody came and looked at me like what is this guy doing so that was my first memory okay yeah all right thank you very much and good luck with your travels on this trip that you're doing all right thank you for having me all right, bye-bye everyone, and please post some comments below and let us know what you think and what you're interested in, what questions you might have for me or John maybe even. Sure. All right. Okay. Matane. Matane.